All right, well, it's not raining today, thankfully. No more pouring down rain, still a little chilly, but nice, nice chilly. It's the type of chilly where once you get started working, you warm up and you're like at the perfect level. For now, I gotta wear my garage built sweater because it is kind of chilly for me. Floridian. <laughs> also, don't forget guys, no turbo, no problem. Shirts are still on pre-sale. So if you guys want one, if you wanna help support Miata version 2.0, check it out in the link below. Uh, there's only a couple days left, so the merch sales are huge in supporting the channel, especially right now, as most of you know with YouTube. Generally, the early months of the year, ad revenue, ads in general go way down. Um, so revenue's cut by about 50%, and uh, it's tough, it's tough. But you know, merch sales and my Patreon supporters and stuff are how we're able to keep things moving as normal, even while YouTube's kinda in a tough spot. So thank you to everyone who has supported us that way. Anyway, today was one of those days where I was like, man, it is a beautiful day outside. I don't wanna be stuck inside all day working on my computer, sending emails, editing and stuff like that. Like I wanna get out there, I wanna get something done, but I don't have anything to do. You know, I'm waiting on parts for all my major projects. And then I thought long and hard about it, and like every time, there's there's stuff I can start on. There's stuff I can finish, there's stuff I can work on. So if you're ever at that point where you think you don't have anything you need to get done, think really hard. You will guarantee, you're guaranteed to find something that needs to get done, something that you can at least start on. So what we have today, exciting projects. One, we got our head gaskets and our exhaust gaskets in. I'm just waiting on the valve seals to come in so I can drop the heads off at the machine shop to get all the work done. Project for today, we got our secondary wool woods in, which is sick. So these are gonna be our handbrake calipers. We got our brackets from V8 Roadsters. We have our caliper lines. I'm just waiting on the line from the handbrake and the T but I'm gonna get this part done so that I can see if you know one of these lines is too long or too short and have time to order the correct one. We also have our shift boot. I finally found like a simple rubber round shift boot. I wanted something really small diameter. So we can wrap up our handbrake shifter section, you know, drill the hole for the shifter to come through, mount the carpet, remove the factory handbrake, mount the shift boot and get the whole, basically the whole interior tied it up, which is really exciting because the whole time I had the car done, this was kind of something I was meaning to get done and I didn't get it done and I didn't get it done. So while the car is apart, it'll be nice to have this done at least, you know what I mean? Like something off the checklist that's been on there for a while. So I think we're gonna start with the rear calipers, most straightforward project of them all. Just, uh, we do have to cut the brackets because we have drop knuckles and the way they're extended, the bracket hits them. So we do need to cut the brackets, but pretty straightforward setup. Start there. Oh, and the car's already on the lift. I mean, you take it off the lift to get to the inside. So obviously it makes the most sense, but still the other reasons too, they also made sense. Okay. They made sense. The second caliper is on. I had some issues where this one was kind of far offset to the outside and I was going back and forth with them and trying to figure out what it was and if it was my knuckles or my rotor or whatever. But then I got this set and it is dead on. The problem is this was the wrong caliper. It's slightly larger. It's slightly bigger. Well, pretty much what it looks like almost in every dimension, uh, but mainly in width, which is causing that. So that's exciting. So that'll help me out a little bit with wheel offset because this caliper is like almost flush at the end of the studs whereas this one is about 10 mil in from that. So that's really exciting. But regardless, how freaking sick does this look? Dual Will Woods, straight pimping. We gotta put a wheel up there to see what it looks like. But first, Ben came home just now with his like 70th Miata. Ben's been a hard top fiend lately. This is like your second hard top car. It's automatic? That's crazy. So check it out. Dual rear four piston Willwoods. So sick. Straight pimping. Straight pimp in. Straight pimping. <laughs> so I'm gonna knock out the other side and then we can start working on lines. All right, so we have our two lines. I ordered a 53 inch and a 36 inch. The reason for that is my plan is you've got handbrake 
in the center. It's gonna come off, and my plan is to go over to the driver's side, it's so like right here, and then have a T going off to each side. So we'll have the short line going to the driver's side caliper, the long line going to the passenger side caliper. Now, I don't know for sure that these are gonna be the right length, especially seeing them in person. They look kinda of small. Look like they might be too small. So normally I go too long, and then I've got a bunch of excess to wrap up. So I was trying to keep it like appropriate lengthwise, but it might not work. So we're gonna find out. So these ended up being pretty much the perfect length to make it to their communal meeting spot, which you know I'd plan on being around here uh, without any snags or anything and without being way too long. They ended up being like almost perfect lengthwise. So that is sick. They definitely looked way too short, but as they always do, they ended up being right. Obviously we'll put grommets in those holes when we really run them down there, but just wanted to test fit them for now, make sure all was well, and it is. I need to order brake pads. I ordered the fittings I need for the calipers and I'm waiting on the other lines. So we will wrap the dual caliper stuff up another day. Now we can move on to interior stuff. Like I said, this is one of those things that, that has been on the list for such a long time that I'm really, I'm really stoked to be getting to it. Like it, it should be really cool and make a big, big difference on the interior once it's done. And it shouldn't be too hard either. It shouldn't take us very long. So I broke my final test plate when I took it out. So I just threw it away, uh, <laughs> which is silly because now I need it because that one had the hole in the right spot for the shifter. So I'm referencing this picture with my original measurements from the shifter set up to try to figure out where to drill the hole. That's what we're doing. came by and brought us uh, our mail. Say hi, Al. Hey, John, what's up? What's up, bud? Shift boot is in. Obviously, we're gonna put the shift boot on top of the carpet, um, but just so you guys can see it, obviously, <laughs> super freaking easy install. So I got this center console delete stuff from Jazz Performance. I'll put the link to both of these below, but it's a super cool setup. So this is a little piece that goes, I guess I'll just show you before we put the carpet in. This wire is kind of in my way, but it goes like that to basically give you like a finished end to your tombstone. So it's not just open like that for where your center console would mount. And then there's the carpet because obviously you have the big split open where the normally the shift boot and stuff would be and the center console would cover and all the holes for that. So this covers that entirely. So you have like one piece of carpet there. So it looks super clean because you end up with just a shift boot and a shifter, you know, instead of having all the clutter there. So I really like that setup, which is why I wanted to do it, which is why I wanted to make the remote mount handbrake so that, you know, we could kind of keep things as clean as possible. If I had like a full handbrake assembly there, kind of defeat the purpose. So, so we need to trim our plate down some to get that to fit. We need to get the car back on the lift or at least jack it up to get to the handbrake cables to undo them so we can pull the handbrake out, which actually I could probably do from up here now that I think about it. But we need to get the handbrake the rest of the way out. We need to pull the plate out, like I said, we need to pull this out. So we got a few more things to do. We'll pick it back up in the morning. See you guys then. I don't even know what I'm doing with my hands. All right, well, we got the whole look. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. Uh, like I said, I just forgot. When I originally cut the trans tunnel out, I didn't cut it big enough for the base of the shifter here. And I wanna raise the shifter up since we've got the dry sump pan now. I wanna bring the trans up too to where it's like 
this is basically touching the trans tunnel instead of this touching the trans tunnel. So bring it up like a solid inch. So I had to cut both of them out more. Um, it's just kind of hard to like continue a circle. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, next step. Yeah, next step is cutting the carpet. So we gotta try to get it in place, figure out where it needs to go, and then cut the slits for the tabs, cut the holes for master cylinder for the handbrake, and then try to fit it on. And then we'll have to kind of figure out the shift boot location and holes for that and stuff, which will be a little tricky, but all in all, it shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't be too bad. And then we get to fit this guy on, which I did have to trim a little bit to fit properly around all my stuff. So yeah, making progress, making progress. Very excited to get this done. It's gonna look freaking sick. Check it out. Finally, very, very happy with how this came out. This is basically exactly what I was hoping for. Like up here, we've got our shift boot and just our two tabs and our handle coming up. Then our rod goes back to our master cylinder. Fits nicely, hidden away. Can't even really see it from up here. Shift boot looks good, fits good. All in all, very, very pleased with it. I do still need to attach this trim piece. I don't have like the bracket, the factory bracket that it's supposed to bolt to. So I gotta kind of figure that out and I also need to clean my tombstone before I do that. But to give you guys an idea of the complete, completed look, very stoked, very stoked to finally, let's do it from the other side. It's a little easier to see without steering wheel in the way. Oh man, that looks so good. So stoked to finally have carpet there and a plate there and the handbrake done and all that. I am gonna 3D print a handle for the handbrake. Probably like retain the holes, like make it slide down to like the second hole or just above the second hole or something. So I need to measure up for that and do that. I think that'll make it look a little better since it's kind of wavy. It'll kind of break it up some. All in all, very, very happy with how the interior has turned out. Can't wait to have the shifter in here. Hopefully I can get it past this boot. We will find out. <laughs> if not, we'll have to slit it and then clamp it or something. But all in all, I think it looks really good. We do have some cool plans coming up. Something very exciting that we may be doing this week. So either way, we're getting really close. We should, shouldn't be too much longer. But anyway, I'm gonna end today's video. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.